Hey guys, Pie Guy Rules here, and welcome to a new round of DVD and Blu-ray reviews. I've been buying a lot of these things lately because of, well, fun reasons. Uh, I like the shows, and I'm a little bit of a collector. Uh, you know, getting them on iTunes is quite convenient, but DVDs and Blu-rays are awesome because it doesn't take up storage on your computer, um, and you can get some cool bonus features, and they look nice on a shelf. Um, also, I've gotten a few for, like, reviewing purposes uh, of, of the actual shows. Um, but since I have them, I figure, why not talk about them? Um, so the, the process is going to go like this. I'm going to talk about the superficial stuff first, like the box, the box art, the menus, that kind of stuff. Then we're going to move into the bonus features, the episodes, you know, like the real meat of the, the thing. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the price and if I think it was worth it. All right, last time I wondered why Jake's face wasn't on the Season 2 DVD. And it turns out his mug was already on a DVD, and that's why he doesn't get the official release. Yeah, see, he got plastered on top of one of the random compilation episode DVDs, which always bug me. Um, so yeah, he's probably not going to be appearing, at least in his normal form, on any of these. Uh, maybe he'll appear as a Jake suit or so, like something, we'll do something clever with him. But that was why he wasn't on season two, probably because it would be too confusing. Um, so yeah, back to BMO. Uh, they do the typical thing of, it's it's a shell. So it starts off with BMO, and it's got the back. Um, and then you peel them, and underneath the faceplate is little circuitry and all that sort of stuff. Um, batteries, speakers, uh, and, as I say, inspected by Mo. Um, and then on the inside is his little heart which is just really cute, as well as his l arms and legs. You can cut them out and attach them to the box. I'm not going to do that, but that's really cute. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think this is really neat aesthetically. Uh, just, just really cool, as usual. Adventure Time had the great idea with this. Um, the only problems I see are the fact that, one, BMO isn't really featured this season. The only episode that he's, like, really important in is Holly Jolly Secrets. He, I'm sure he appears in some of the other ones, um, like, I know he appears in uh, What Was Missing, but he only really has that one major appearance, um, at least that's sticking out in my mind. Uh, definitely not a BMO-heavy season. And also, the references on here, like The Heart and The Inspected by Mo, those are from Be More, the Season 5 episode. It would have made a lot more sense if this was the Season 5 DVD, or Blu-ray. But whatever, that's just a minor nitpick. BMO is an important character, so I understand why they'd want to pick him next. Um, I should also mention, uh, before I forget, that there is inside of here an ultraviolet vi code underneath this thing. Um, it's for Flickster, and it basically gives you a digital download slash digital streaming option. Um, it's kind of annoying because I don't use Flickster, I use iTunes. But hey, they... They are um, digital releases that come with this, so that's not a bad thing. Um, the other problem with this sort of DVD, Blu-ray, um, I, I, I'm going to use them interchangeably. If I if I say DVD, I mean Blu-ray. Um, it's, th it's the same cover design for both of them, uh, but with the Blu-ray. Um, the problem is when you try to put it in back, the plastic catches on the top. Plastic catches like right, like right now on this. Um, and sometimes the Blu-ray thing catches as well. That's kind of annoying. It was definitely more annoying with Season 2 because the Ice King had a jagged beard. Um, but it's still kind of annoying. I mean, I love the aesthetic. I think it's really cool. But it would be even cooler if it didn't catch because that is really annoying and frustrating. Um, so next up, let's talk about the menus. Um, so the menus on this thing are nice. You know, they're clean. Um, it's all one menu, basically. It's all one screen, and different menus kind of slide up from the bottom. Because it's a Blu-ray, they can do that. Um, and the, the main thing this means is that the music is consistent. It doesn't reset every time you get into a new page, um, like it would on a DVD. Um, and the music is great. It starts off with the Adventure Time closing theme, like the full version of it, and it's a really sweet song. And then it goes into four or five little, you know, background, ethereal, Adventure Timey music. Uh, pieces and then it loops so it only loops after a little while and it doesn't constantly change as you go through menus so really really not annoying really nice there's been times i mean i've just kind of left it on while i'm doing other stuff and the the music is really nice um so thumbs up to that the the only problem 
uh, is that <laughs> it only takes up the bottom half of the screen, the menus, which is kind of irritating because the thumbnail pictures for each episode and the titles have to be really small. Um, it would be cool if they would blow them up. You know, you got a, I got a giant screen TV. It'd be nice to see these title intro title cards nice and big on the screen um, as well as the text. And I'd, I'd imagine there's even a problem if you had a smaller TV with reading this. Um, they have a lot of screen space and they don't use it very well. The top just says Adventure Time the entire time. Would have been cool if it took up the entire screen. And actually, I know, um, at least with the Season 2 DVD, that's what it does. It takes up the full screen. And you get to see these title cards nice and big. Uh, so I guess that's one disadvantage of the Blu-ray. I should also mention that there are trailers at the front of this. Um, not a big deal. You can skip past them. But this is one of those Blu-rays with stuff at the front, which is just, like, a little irritating. But considering you don't have to switch discs... Um, that that's not as bad there in terms of menu options um you don't get too much actually like for languages all you get are english subtitles that's it no other language subtitles dubbed not even english dubbed for the visually impaired that's it english subs on or off that's all um which i mean i personally doesn't affect me but i'm sure that would be annoying because usually it's standard that there's at least like some kind of other language like spanish and i'm sure it says it on the back that it's only in english um but whatever um and then also you do get the option to play all of the commentaries like back to back to back uh there's a play all button for like regular episodes but there is also a play all for commentaries and that's a thumbs up and that leads us into the bonus features which are mostly the commentaries. There are commentaries on every episode, um, and they're better than Season 2's commentaries. Season 2 had to bleep out a lot of stuff, and so they did a lot of weird ukulele music um, by pen and uh, like just kind of a lot of other fillery stuff to censor it. This one still has that, but it's definitely less. They've definitely kind of learned to tone back talking about it, even like even just mentioning it. Um, and they're... They, there doesn't seem to be very much of censorship in terms of saying dirty things. What's really weird is that there is censorship in terms of products. They cannot mention any other movies, any other TV shows outside of, like, Cartoon Network ones. Um, they can't mention uh, products of, like, types of phone. They can't mention anything. Um, and I guess it's for legal reasons, but it's weird because I've seen Simpsons DVD commentaries and really any other DVD commentary, even... Even a certain thing that I'll review not too long from now um, has commentaries where they talk about movies and just whatever. Um, and there usually is a disclaimer at the beginning saying, like, the views expressed in these commentaries are of that of the people and do not represent the network. But there's not there's not one in front of this. So I, I don't know what's up with that. Um, it can lead to some awkward moments. Like, they have to bleep out. He's like, I was recording it on my phone. Um, he was obviously either going to say iPhone or, like, Android phone or something like that. Um, it's just, it's really weird. There's even a point where they have to, they want to reference One Piece, but they can't, so they say it's a long-running anime called Single Portion. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's weird. Um, but they don't, they don't do it that much. They do it less and less as the commentaries go on. There's a number of commentaries that just don't have anything censored uh and what they decided to do for censorship this time was there's this weird echoey reverb thing that that basically they reverb whatever the last person said so it'll be like i said da, 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 da. and um it's a little weird and jarring at first but as it goes on you get used to it and it's it's a pretty interesting sound it's it's a lot better than just silence um and it's less jarring than like pen jumping in saying i'm gonna sing you a song now um you know, it would be cool if it was just uncensored, if they could talk about other movies. Um, and it is frustrating because you know it's coming. You know they're saying something. Um, but what are you going to do? The commentaries are there. In terms of how insightful they are, most of the time it is just kind of surface-level chatter, which I find interesting, but not everyone will. In terms of, like, really juicy stuff, there are a few interesting things. The most interesting that I found was on Holly Jolly Secrets. They talk about how the original concept was that Finn and Jake were going to find VHSs of old holiday specials and watch them and make fun of them, like riff on them, um, like with their shadows in front of it and everything. They couldn't say Mystery Science 3000. Um, 
which I thought would have been a really cool idea. But yeah, th- that is one of the most interesting things to hear them talk about. And there's a few other tidbits. But on the whole, it is it is mostly light and fluffy. Um, and definitely more organized than Season 2, but still kind of disorganized. And like there's a lot of people in them, and people come and go. And I don't know. Could, could be more organized, but it's clear that this was just kind of like done by the people making the show because they wanted to put it on the on the Blu-ray D- and DVD, not like the network saying, you know, all right, we're going to give you a recording studio and we're going to do this and that and this. No, it, it seemed to be they wanted to do it for the fans, um, which is cool. I'm glad that they're there in general because they're, they're really the only bonus feature. Um, there are two more. There's a seven-minute featurette uh, about the making of an Adventure Time story that doesn't really go into much. And then there's like a minute long thing that's the, the Adventure Time intro made with Legos. And it's cool. Both of those are cool, but they're very short. So the commentaries are the bulk of the bonus features. If you're not into commentaries, there is pretty much nothing in terms of bonus features on this disc. Fair warning. Um, so... <clears throat> then we're going to get into the actual season itself. I'm not going to give you a full review, but I will say this season is awesome. Season three is a great season. It had tons of things like the first appearance of Lemon Grab and Too Young, Weird Al's cameo in The New Frontier, the critically acclaimed Thank You, the Ice King dark origin story that kind of started this little dark story arc in Holly Jolly Secrets. My personal favorite, or one of my personal favorites, What Was Missing? Um, I mean... This, too, from bad to worse. It's another great episode. Um, It also introduces Flame Princess and gives Finn a cool sword in Dad's dungeon. There's a ton of really, really good episodes in here. And even even the ones that aren't quite as interesting are still pretty good. Um, Like Paper Paper Pete and Apple Thief. I would consider those less memorable, less interesting, but still enjoyable. Um, I think it's a great crop of episodes. There's 26 righteous episodes. Righteous episodes, as it says on the back. Um, And that's cool. So, is it worth it? Well, if you like the episodes, yes. I paid $20 for this, and I believe it goes for about $33. Um, I would pay between $20 and $35 for this. Um, You know, I think the episodes are worth it. I think the commentaries are kind of interesting. But I think... I think about $20 for just the season of episodes. For 26 episodes, that's a better deal than than buying the episodes individually on iTunes, although I think you can get a package for probably 20 bucks. Um, But I think that's about a good deal. You know, um, it's well put together. The commentaries can occasionally be interesting. Um, But that's that's basically it. If if you're interested in these episodes and you would pay that much for these episodes, then do it. Um, But don't buy this expecting there to be a lot of bonus features or a lot of, like, really interesting insight in the commentaries. Um, So I'll leave that to be up to you. Pie Guy Rules out.